the very important next aspect and we've talked a little bit about when we talk about brand holding versus price is that brand is a being right and what do i mean by brand is a being i mean that actually you don't treat your brand as just a brand or a logo you treat your brand as a person and and i really like this quote that jeff bezos said jeff bezos said your brand is what people say about you when you're not in the room um, so think about your brand as a person who has a reputation who has a personality who has certain characters qualities and traits right and so i'm actually going to talk a little bit more about nine steps according to me according to us um for building a brand that's more than just a logo so i think uh, the first one is that we all have a purpose in life right and so what's your brand purpose why do you exist what makes you different what problem does your brand or your product really solve and why should i as a customer really care right and and i think um simon sinek is something is, is someone who i respect a lot and and he sort of made this golden circle it was first what your brand was selling right that was first the most important thing it then transitioned to how your brand was solving a problem and today if you think of a brand like toms right customers buy the brand because of the purpose because of the ethos because of the brand today this polo that i'm wearing i may have actually paid four to five times the price of this polo because of this logo on this polo right i resonate with this brand i believe in this brand i believed in what they stood for and so i bought the brand right so people don't buy what you do they buy why you do it the goal is not to do business with everybody that needs what you have right the goal is to do business with people who believe what you believe and more and more consumers actually start caring for what a brand stands for start caring for what a brand believes they care about sustainability in packaging they care about all these things that weren't existent or let's say 10 20 years ago right and so thinking about your brand purpose is extremely important researching the landscape right so so i think uh, as i said earlier when i when i talked about the example from the hubspot cto as well companies that solely focus on competition will die those that focus on value creation will thrive right so don't imitate but definitely be aware understand what the landscape looks like understand what what the ecosystem is right and then differentiate or stand out to your customers i kept an example here um of of the competitive landscape for the ayurveda market right so we went from mass to premium and we went from preventive to functional preventive would be lifestyle or um wellness related functional would be more therapeutic or illness related right? and then we mapped out this market and eventually figured out where our brand stood and where the white space for our brand dr vedya's was which was it was a mass premium brand it wasn't the cheapest brand in the market but it wasn't a luxury brand it was in between accessible brand and we stood between illness and wellness so we had as much of a range in preventive as we had in the um, therapeutic or curative space and similarly all of you should think about how your brand stands on its own two feet and stands in the ecosystem what's your target audience right you can't be everything from everyone because if you're everything for everyone then you're nothing for no one right so tailoring your message to your customers narrowing your target audience but don't narrow it based on what you want narrow it based on what your customers believe like i had a lot of people who came back to me and said hey i i don't like the dr vedya's packaging personally right it's not minimalistic it's not millennial it's not urban right and so i went back to these people and i said look Doctor Vedas is not a urban elite brand. Eighty-two percent of Doctor Vedas sales came from outside the top ten cities, and so this brand actually has color. It has jazz. It has Hindi on it because that's what resonates with our customer base. And so I don't want to alienate my customer base based on basis what kind of customer I am, right? And that's very important. So define your brand persona and define your brand persona in detail. is also very important and 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 vikas and megna will tell you as you do your digital marketing as well right so i have i have sort of put an example of one of my portfolio companies that i have invested in it's called anvea it's a premium personal care brand and this is the way they have identified their brand persona right so they went into detail saying hey my brand is a premium personal care brand my audience is female audience 25 to 45 years old metro working audience upper or upper middle class these audiences believe that mass brands are for the masses but take pride in investing in a 
more premium brand, take pride in investing in oneself. These customers care about natural, sustainable, clean products. They have bought international brands um, when they travel, and they care about brands like Aveda, Drunk Elephant, um, Diva Curl. And for this specific use case, they haven't found an Indian brand that they trust. And we want to be that Indian brand they trust. And so they've put the gender, the persona, the customer personality, the way the customer thinks, and relevant global brands the customer may have bought or care about right and so that gives you enough meat to really understand your customer persona and your target audience step four is your mission statement right and this mission statement is really important because it's one statement it's one sentence that defines who you are when someone asks you what you do you should be able to answer this with one statement it's the reason you get up every day it has to reflect in everything that that is your brand, right? Your logo, your packaging, your branding, your communication, the way your team talks, the way you talk. Dr. Vedya's, for example, is a brand that repackaged Ayurveda for the modern consumer for the 21st century, right? And so that's how we define our mission statement. Taking 150 years of family legacy and 5,000 years of science to the modern consumer. That was the mission statement of Dr. Similarly, if you see Nike's mission statement, it says brings inspiration, bring inspiration and innovation to every athlete in the world, right? If you have a body, you're an athlete. So it doesn't mean professional athletes, it means any of us, right? And so I'm happy wearing my Nike socks or shoes while I go for my workout. I really like this, this exercise and, and I think um, it adds a lot of value to brands and, and adds a lot of value to um people that I speak to as well. There'll always be others, but there's only one you. And what is that one you, right? Your products, services define who you are, but who are you as a personality? And, and I think the best way to do this is to create this laundry list of qualities, but then eventually pick those that matter, right? So in the example here I have of Dr. Vedya's, we created this brand where we said, what does Dr. Vedya stand for? Stands for legacy, Ayurveda, quality, trust, 21st century, modern, innovative, digital first, D2C, natural, side effect free, ancient, patriotic, Indian, heritage, right? And then we eventually picked the three that matter. And what were the three that we chose? We chose proudly Indian, new age Ayurveda, and 150 years of legacy. And those were the three qualities that defined our brand and who we were. And if you see Dr. Vedya's, you'll see these three qualities coming out in, in, in everything we do. I think moving past your brand qualities, now that we have a personality, we also have a way to talk, right? We also have a way that we speak. And Indigo for me is the best example. I have a way of talking. I, I have a way of, of my personality. I am accessible. I am excited. I am enthusiastic. I am passionate. That's my personality as Arjun Vega, right? What is your brand? Are you professional? Are you casual? Are you friendly? Are you serious? What is it, right, that, that you stand for? Whether it's an email, the way you talk to a customer, the way your team speaks, the way you talk inside your organization, right? Every time you see Indigo, whether you see the uniform, you see the badges they wear on the uniform, you order a sandwich and you see the communication on the packaging that goes with the sandwich or the packet of smoked almonds, you see the communication on your ticket, you see the communication in the plane, all of these, and then eventually even, you know, Indigo is an airline that's always on time. And I remember in my private equity day, uh, in my private equity days, meeting the Indigo team as well. And they said, look, if you show up even one minute late to a meeting, whoever you are, you are not allowed in the meeting, right? And that's how the culture and the personality permeates in the organization of Indigo, right? And so, Setting your brand voice and, and what it sort of believes. And here are so many examples of sort of advertising of collaterals of Indigo. And you'll see the same tongue-in-cheek, casual, friendly um, personality that goes with the brand, right? I think this is the, the one that all of us know. And we're finally here. And, and this is the logo, colors, icons, typography, fonts of the brand. But I think what's really important is not just putting a logo together, but defining a visual style guide, right? What is your brand allowed to do and what, your, what is your brand not allowed to do? What fonts are allowed with your brand? 
what colors are you allowed to have what colors are you not allowed to have how can your logo be used and how can your logo not be used right and i think as a founder for me ensuring consistency and and negna and vikas would know this i would stop them from doing some certain things with my brand saying this is not allowed with my brand right ensuring consistency matters and fighting for it as a founder really matters so developing the brand guidelines but constantly going back to it and saying hey i i, I don't allow this with my brand my brand will not go here because it's not the personality of my brand that's also really important when you define your brand's visual style guide and then once we've done all of these things right we have a brand we have a personality we have a competitive landscape we found our niche we've defined what our brand voice is we've made our visual style guide you then integrate it everywhere right your brand goes everywhere it's in your store it's in your office on digital it's in print it's the way you talk to your customers it's the way you talk to your team every starbucks that you go to in the world right it'll have this community table in it it'll have this sort of community vibe every starbucks you go to in the world when you order a drink uh, they'll write your name on it right that consistency of messaging is really important if you look at wobby parker right whether it's their twitter page their app their packaging their glasses their out of store their visibility their in store it all looks like one brand I and mean, so integrating your brand across every aspect of your business including your email signature is extremely important and then finally for all of us as d2c founders right wearing your brand on your sleeve is extremely important for all of you who interact with me while i was a dr vedias you know i always wore a dr vedias t-shirt right i always wore it and so i think this one linkedin post that i put um, was really important i was obsessed right i proposed to my wife with a livida packet before i gave her a ring um and and the livida packet said will you marry me i wore a dr vedias t-shirt every single day to work if you guys would have seen me on the instagram lives in any interviews or done i always wore that green t-shirt right and and i think why did i wear this green t-shirt because i remember like i would travel with this dr vedias t-shirt and go i I'd get on flights with this t-shirt and and as my brand started growing people started noticing the t-shirt And people start saying, "Hey, what do you do?" Oh, Doctor Vedas, I've heard of this brand. It's the online Ayurveda brand, right? And and I wore this green T-shirt until my father-in-law stopped me, and and he made linen shirts for me, saying, "Hey, like, you're you're a you're a founder of a pretty large brand now. You need to wear shirts." And and so I said, "I'll only wear shirts if you put my company's logo on it, right? My laptop cover, my phone cover, even my cufflinks had our brand logo on it, right? And and every time I went to a wedding where I didn't see live it up, it pissed me off, right? And so I think. for us as founders we have to wear our brands on our sleeve right so so i think summarizing uh, the the sort of section on brand right i think going over the nine steps again um it's really really important um to think about what your brand purpose is find your white space in the landscape and understand where your brand stands on so to speak define your target audience in detail with your customer persona have a mission statement one sentence your brand stands for define just three at max qualities that define your brand's personality have a brand voice and way you talk develop a detailed visual style guide and ensure consistency integrate your brand across every aspect of your business and then as a founder wear it on your sleeve and if you do these these nine things um you should be able to have a strong brand